So I arrived at the Wadkin Temple with my cutter head, my blanks, and my sample crown molding piece, uh, ready to get my uh, first lesson in, in grinding from Jack. So in the bench cup, we got a bunch of tools ready and set up a bit of a workstation to do the grinding. So contrary to what a lot of people think, it's not a matter of just tracing the profile on the knife and grinding away. The complication arises from the fact that cutter heads have what's called a rake angle. In other words, they don't intersect the wood at a 90 degrees. This rake angle is beneficial, of course, because it allows the cutter to slice instead of scrape, but it also means that the shape of the cutter is slightly different than the silhouette of the piece itself. Now, there are all kinds of benefits of different rake angles, and it's a lot more complicated than that, and I'll post a link below that uh, you can use if you if you want some more details. What we did is simply, on the compound miter saw, cut a sample of the crown that we were copying um, at the appropriate rake angle and trace that onto the knife to give us the, the proper silhouette we were aiming for. So as you can see, we decided not to make knives for the entire section of crown molding, because the only part that was really unique was the cove and bead section, and the rest could be reproduced with either stock cutter heads or even table saw cuts. So this is the profile we need to grind uh, in order to make the cove and bead section of our crown molding. Of course, the finer the marker, the better. But another neat technique is to color the whole critical area of the knife with uh, Sharpie and then use a really sharp scratch all to uh, trace the profile. It makes a really, really fine, uh, neat line to fall. So on the portion of the profile where you have to remove a lot of steel, there's no point in using any fancy grinding wheels. Just use your regular bench grinder and, uh, and grind away and remove, remove most of it. You have to be careful of heating the steel up too much, but only when you get close to the part of the uh, knife that's actually going to, to hold the finished cutter head. Good steel. Harder than my other stuff. Keeping the steel cool, of course, is a lot easier on your fingers, but it also reduces the likelihood of your negatively affecting um, some of the properties of the steel. Here is Jack's uh, patented system for uh, cooling off the knife periodically. Doesn't always have to be fancy. With the 4mm knife stock, the rough grinding is fairly quick. I timed Jack and it took him about 4 minutes to get to the rough profile that you see here. The idea is to get close to the line while you're using your uh, cheaper, more aggressive uh, grinding wheels. But keep an eye on it make sure you don't get uh, get things too hot, especially as you get close to the final profile. As you can see from the uh, video clip, we're grinding at 90 degrees to the edge of the cutter right now. We're not putting, uh, not putting the angle on it at this stage. So now we move over to the white wheels, which are a lot softer and run cooler, which is important as you get closer to the final cutting edge. Uh, and like I said, it doesn't have to always be fancy. Here we see Jack modifying the uh, shape of the wheel with uh, an old masonry blade. So once you have the wheel at the appropriate shape, grind away, still at uh, 90 degrees. Here are a couple shots of, uh, of that process. As you finish a particular section of the profile and move on to another one, just reshape your wheel as necessary. Having a second narrower wheel around is really helpful for getting into tight corners. Once you have the profile where you want it, trace it on to your other knife. Here Jack's using a simple shop made jig that uses the two pinholes and the pin knives uh, to make sure they're lined up. When they're both done to your satisfaction, it's time to start putting the bevel on the blades. Using a factory ground knife for the same head, we measured the bevel angle with a protractor and set up a couple of tool rests in front of the grinder to help hold the knives at the appropriate angle. Tool rests were simply scrap pieces of MBF cut on the miter saw and clamped to the bench in front of the grinder. As you're grinding the bevel, you're also grinding the very last little bit to your line. Go slow here, even though these wheels run a lot cooler, you still want to make sure you don't overheat the knives. Again, use the smaller wheel set up the same way to get into the tighter cor corners and reshape your wheel whenever necessary. Check your progress regularly with your sample piece, um, remembering to hold the knife on the, on the bevel angle. 
Once you're happy with what it looks like, the job is to make sure that your second knife is as close to this one as possible so you end up with a true two knife cutting action in the cutter head. While you can certainly buy fancy jigs and tools to do that, one approach is to use that same jig we used earlier to trace the profile of the, of the knife that you're happy with and, uh, and use that to verify that the second knife you've ground matches very closely. One thing we haven't talked about too much is uh, the idea of a, of a relief angle on certain parts of the cutter. It's a little hard to, to show on a more complicated profile, so let's just use this uh, straight cutter, which maybe you're using for a rebate as, as an example. In this picture, the, uh, the cutter in the head would be moving from, from left to right. And as you can see, the top parts, the top and bottom parts of the cutter are actually ground on, uh, on, a, on a slight angle. Now I've exaggerated those two angles in the uh, in the picture just to help illustrate, but the reason they have to be there is because in a cutter head that cutter would be revolving horizontally, and the wood that's left after the cutting action would otherwise be rubbing against the steel in those locations. That can create a, a lot of heat and produces a much poorer quality finish. So to avoid that we need the uh, slight relief angle on any points in the in the cutter um, that are close to horizontal. You can see what that looks like in a more complicated profile in this shot, especially around the points. Now that's just, this is a very quick and dirty explanation of it. Um, if you want to get into this uh, in your own shop, you'll have to uh, you have to look into it in more detail, but that's the gist of it. So once you finish with the grinding, it's a good idea to lap the back of the knives to get rid of the burr and then you're ready for your test cuts. And this is the product our knives produced. Um, it's probably best to be most concerned about the uh, linear features in the profile, making sure they all line up properly. If your coves or beads are out just a tiny little bit, it probably won't be a problem. In this case, it looks pretty good, so we're happy with the knives and we can move on to our final pieces.